Yep, bet you don't see too many of these. This is one of those luggable computers. I really don't have much space. Go ahead and turn it on. Takes a special MS DOS 2.1 for the Texas Instrument. 2.11, excuse me. And it's not PC compatible, but it kind of sort of is. And if we run check disk. It is a 360K, so it's a double-sided 40-track drive, both of them are. But we only have 256K of RAM, which is not even enough to run Tandy 1000 software. 384K is required. So, what I have over there in the back there's a bunch of upgrade cards for this particular machine. And they've been kind of sitting there for a while and I haven't done anything with them. I've already taken the screws out. And then this, you got a screw here, a screw here, and one inside there. And then the cover just slides off. Jeez, really? Oh, okay. Well, this this piece right here was hitting that piece there. Let's stretch these old wires. Alright. We've got one memory expansion card already in here, so that brought it up to 256k. This is our... Yeah. This is the CGA card. Okay, what we have here is a multifunction card and memory expansion. Over here, we have a daughter board. There's 256K on each level there. So 512 total, plus the 256 that's already in there gives you 768. And... I did not see, it didn't talk about any jumpers that needed to be set on the board. This is also a brand new card. I broke the seal. I broke the original seal. Anyway, so we got to get one of those backing plates off and, and put this it card in. doesn't have a jumper block like a PC does. But we'll find out when it plug it in doesn't work. And there it is installed. That is a full length card. I don't make them like that anymore. Except those <laughs> people think the the new graphics cards on these they're making are, are full size. No, they had full size cards long before those graphics cards. And they're supposed to. Okay. Well, there it goes, okay. Let me get all these screws back in. I got a blinking cursor. I didn't die. It's got 
it's worked if we do the check disc. So it doesn't run on. Ha ha ha! 786. So 768 worked. Oh my gosh. Great. So. Hey, no jumpers. Wow. It just freaking worked. Let's try that. Oh, Weaver, that's right. I don't know if this game will run on this operating system or not, but it certainly has a better chance with more RAM. Just drive. It's still reading. this is a text-based software it should work fine if it's graphics it may not uh, it, it shut off and we have nothing yeah, CGA uh, it's, yeah it's probably graphic oh well darn Well, I got something to run, sort of. The Taping Tutor program. It just kind of loaded, it just loaded instructions. That's, yeah, just all that's all that did. It just loaded, it loaded instructions off the, it was just text. See what happens. Keyboard works perfectly. So typing teacher works. I think there's a CGA card plugged in the back, but this monitor is not. would be Wheel of Fortune and that's probably not going to work. (laughs) 
System error. Yeah. It's not gonna work. Even though it has enough RAM. Oh wow, I'm gonna have to control out the heat. Just nifty. I got the memory upgraded and it actually ran a PC software. And just for lols, I believe this is DOS 6.22. We'll put it in the A drive. This is already booted into 2.11. Come on, go for something. And it does read the disk. Do a reboot and see what happens. Probably not going to work because it has to boot the Texas Instrument DOS and then load the PC emula emulation so that you can run PC software. Otherwise, it would just run Texas Instrument. Yeah. Yep. So, if you have one of these computers, and you're getting these errors, you're not using the right DOS disk. It has to be Texas Instrument MS-DOS. drive work really well on this one and then it loads the PC emulator for DOS 2.11 I do have up here and I may explore this option later inside here is a hard drive controller an MFM hard drive controller for this computer may explore that later. I just don't have enough software for this computer to justify putting a hard drive in it. It works very well with just two floppies. And there's really nothing on there I can run. Yeah. Huh. I wonder what else I've got. Yeah, there we go. Tells you what kind of computer you got. The TI Professional, DOS 2.11. An 8088, got a serial port, a parallel port. No coprocessor. Monochrome display, that's probably part of our problem there. So it's only displaying, it's only text. So any game or any program that displays any kind of graphics is can't display it. Uh, wow. Available drives A through F? 6. 768K and it, wow, it breaks it all down for us. That's kind of nifty. And it's a little bit faster. So this, this program, this SIM system information program, it compares the speed of your computer to an IBM XT. So if your computer is the same speed as the IBM XT which runs at 4.77 megahertz it would give you a 1.0 this gives me a 1.1 so according to this this computer is a little bit faster which is kind of nifty although I, I don't really notice it <laughs> other than the disk drive seemed to work flawlessly uh, so that's kind of neat little information there and then we have the scan disk, SD for scan disk. I might stick my professional right disk in there and see what the heck. Yeah, insert the disk. 
or speed disc. Oh, I'm sorry, not scan disc, speed disc. This is a defragmenter. It'll defragment your disc so it'll go faster. And everything's <laughs> that disc isn't fragmented. So yeah, we got some software runs on this computer, but it just has to be well behaved and has to have no graphics. So there you go. That's the IBM or the Texas Instrument portable professional computer. Kind of, sort of IBM compatible. Almost, but not quite.